by definition, banking is, is, prim is founded on the proposition that at the village level, banks can promise that which they cannot deliver. Therefore, as long as everyone believes that the game is a perpetual game, then you can have maturity transformation, credit transformation, and liquidity transformation. And that is a positive sum game for society. A positive sum game for society. A very simple example of how it is a positive sum game for society. If all of us had to keep all of our wealth in these things, or a large chunk of our wealth in these things, we would have the irrational result of everyone having to have a large safe in their house. Safes are, no pun intended, a dead weight on society. Banking allows us to minimize the number of safes we have in our home. And I say that tongue in cheek because there are lots of reasons that banking is a positive for society. But by definition, since only the government can declare this thing to be legal tender, and this is what you want to be sure that your deposit can be turned into, banking is inherently a private public venture because only the government, we the people, can print these things. Doesn't mean that I haven't had an impulse to do it before. I've resisted the impulse because I rather like my pinstripes going vertical, not horizontal. Only the government can print these things. And deposit insurance and a central banker are absolutely critical to the functioning of a going concern banking system. Therefore, bankers, I know a few of them in the United States, who harp, complain, and bellyache continuously about government messing in their private sector capitalism driven business can just shut up. They don't like it. But it's a marriage. Whether it's made in heaven or hell, I don't know, but it is a marriage. Bankers need the government. to ensure the gap between ex ante and ex post demand for liquidity. Bankers can't do that. They need the government to underwrite that exigency and therefore create the ability for bankers to do that which they do, which is maturity, credit, and liquidity transformation, which is a very profitable exercise, by the way. <laughs> so. Bankers need the government. In contrast, the government needs bankers. <laughs> because bankers actually don't have to use democratic principles in deciding who gets a loan and who doesn't. They can look at prospective return on investment, which is a bastion of efficiency and resource allocation. Bankers and government need each other not a matter of they need to be polite to each other. They literally need each other. They could not exist in an efficient form maximizing utility for society independently. They need each other, literally need each other. And it is a tug of war in some respects, like a marriage. Not every day is going to be perfect. Maybe yours is. 
and I will concede that. I'm speaking for myself here. I got divorced after 17 years. So, <laughs> uh, so I can't say mine was perfect. But it's a marriage. And right now, the global village is quite appropriately in very serious marital therapy. <laughs> That's what the title of this conference is can be on your bumper sticker, marital therapy for banks and governments. Uh, and the most important thing in marital therapy, whether it's between banks and governments or in villages or anywhere else, is honesty, transparency, and telling the truth. Doesn't mean that honestly, transparently telling the truth won't reveal differences of opinion. In fact, it will reveal differences of opinion, but you're not talking past each other. <laughs> you're actually getting to the brass tacks of where your differences and your agreements are, which is the foundation of having a regulatory architecture that serves the village. Let me conclude, and actually I am almost on time. I pat myself on the back. I'm not very good at being on time. First principles and practicalities. I went through three with you. Micro and macro are two different disciplines. Never forget it. Number two, monetary and physical policy are similar instruments and a toolkit derived from the power of the government. Don't forget it. Principle number three. Banking is inherently, inherently a public-private sector venture. All solutions for stability must reflect this inherent verity. Deviations from this verity are prescriptions for 2008. Not a good outcome. Take all three principles together and you have a paradigm that some would call post-Keynesian economics. I will call simply right thinking. Thank you very much.